Hello and welcome to our second lecture uh, where we're going to cover um, network virtualization abstractions to help understand how virtual networks in general work. And to do that, first I'm going to uh, establish a parallel with virtual machines and virtualization in general. So if you look at the behavior of a virtual machine, typically it works at the level of instructions of a microprocessor. And the key idea is that you want instructions to run most of the time in the microprocessor without the virtualization software being in the middle, so to speak. But some instructions you need to intercept and emulate. So a virtual machine monitor is a selective emulator of a small subset of instructions. And these are the ones uh, that are so-called privileged instructions that trap uh, and exercise the use of the virtual machine monitor. Uh, they are emulated in the context of the virtual machine that issued that instruction. So for example, the virtual machine on the right may be issuing uh, arithmetic logic operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication on general purpose registers, and these can run interpreted by the physical machine without any overhead of the virtualization layer. Now the virtualization layer does kick in when a virtual machine issues an instruction that should not execute directly in hardware because it could violate isolation, for example, across uh, the different VMs. So the idea here is that for these instructions, the uh, physical machine will raise an exception, a trap, and that's going to be handled by the virtual machine monitor. It's going to emulate that uh, just like a computer uh, microprocessor uh, would with the same behavior, but in the context of the virtual machine that issued it. So for example, if it has to change uh, a privileged register, it's going to change the value of the privileged register of the virtual CPU, not of the physical CPU, because changing the physical CPU uh, would cause a uh, violation uh, of isolation. In a virtual network, we have, um, in many ways, a similar scenario. So we want to intercept events of interest, and these would be network packets being sent or received. And you want to emulate the behavior of this event in the context of the virtualized resource. Now, the virtualized resource is an entire network. So if you intercept sending of a packet, you want to emulate the sending of that packet in the context of the virtual network uh, that uh, the network interface is bound to. So let's look a little bit deeper into the uh, abstractions of uh, networks that help um, place into context how virtual networks work. So in a network, you have a number of devices, at least two, to communicate. And these devices are connected by links. So a device may have one or more links. A link could be, for example, Wi-Fi link to your wireless router or a physical Ethernet connection to another computer in your network. So the key abstractions are a network device is able to send a message, and it tells which link it wants that message sent and provides a buffer with the data that should be sent. And that message goes over the physical network, uh, let's say wireless, or through uh, the wires of a, a physical network link. And on the destination, uh, the counterpart of the abstraction is the receiving of a message, where a network device waits for a message on the link and provides a buffer to copy that into. So virtualization, we're going to have to look at these events and determine how do we handle them in the context of a virtual network. This is sort of uh, illustrating the behavior of a physical network, for example, two computers connected by an Ethernet uh, cable. Now keep in mind that these network devices are computers themselves. These could be switches or routers. These are specialized computers that do just networking, but they could also be a server or your desktop or your laptop implementing the functionality uh, or the behavior of a virtual network interface or a virtual network switch or a virtual router. Okay, so these are essentially computers uh, that might be specialized or might be uh, general purpose. So, preserving abstractions is important uh, to provide virtualization. And to give you an example, again, in contrast with a virtual machine, think about what happens when a virtual machine an application inside the virtual machine is trying to write data to a disk. So let's say inside a VM an application writes a block of data B and he wants to put in a particular location of a virtual disk VD. 
So we're going to give an offset, a location, uh, a number that specifies where that data should go in this virtual disk. Now the virtual disk is only um, in, within the scope, within the context of the virtual machine. But there's a physical disk in your uh, underlying hardware. So what happens is this is a privileged operation. You're trying to change uh, the value of a shared resource, which is your, uh, your disk uh, storage. That's going to be trapped and emulated by a virtual machine monitor. And what the virtual machine monitor will do is we'll find a way to map what's the value, what's the offset in the physical disk that corresponds to the offset X in the virtual disk. So there's a mapping from X in virtual disk VD to offset Y in the physical disk PD. And the data is eventually written to that value in the physical disk uh, and emulated in that process uh, the writing of uh, B to offset X in virtual disk VD. Now looking at back to virtual networks. So suppose now we have a, an application that sends a message to another application over the network. The operating system will eventually take a message as re requesting a send, the sending of a network uh, frame, for example, an Ethernet frame, uh, with contents F uh, through a link L. So that's going to go to a virtual network interface that uh, will be intercepted. And we'll see how this works in the context of IPOP later, but this could be essentially an application running in the same computer that's able to read from this virtual network interface and find this message F. And it can do all sorts of things with this message. It can encrypt it, it can encapsulate in another packet, for example, TCP or EDP, and send it over a different link. So now from a logical link L, we move to a physical link P, and the message goes out over the physical network interface, let's say, to another computer across the internet. From the perspective of this original message, it's sending a frame over link L, which is uh, the virtual network link, and then through this process of uh, interception and emulation, that gets translated into sending a message on a different protocol over a physical network. Now, virtual networks, uh, as described, can be applied in different places. Um, in general, you could run virtual networks on the endpoints. So that could be, in the example I just gave, of an application that works like a virtual router running on two endpoints, let's say two virtual machines in the cloud. Or you could run virtualization on the fabric itself, on the switches and routers that make up uh, the uh, networking cloud, if you wish. And there are benefits and drawbacks of each approach. One nice thing about running on the endpoints is you don't expect to have any control of the underlying network. For example, you're not allowed to make changes to the uh, internet. You're not allowed to configure lots of devices that connect, let's say, your computer to a friend's computer. But you do have the ability to run software on your computer, and your friend has an ability to run software on their computer. So you're able to create a virtual private network without asking the internet to change in any way. But there's an overhead associated with this of encryption, encapsulation, and uh, running software on the endpoints. What enables this to work is tunneling, where you allow a message, an original message that you want to communicate, to be encrypted and to be encapsulated in another protocol. For example, uh, a datagram on this side that's encrypted and encapsulated in a TCP message that goes from this endpoint to that endpoint. And on the other side, you peel it out, decrypt, and deliver the same message unmodified uh, to this endpoint. So if you have a router, for example, a VPN router uh, with the uh, darker blue here on both sides, it allows the light blue device on this side to communicate with the light blue on this side as if they were on the same local network. But all the complexity of encrypting and tunneling is handled by these routers at the edge uh, of the public IP uh, network. Alternatively, you could have, if you're able to control and program the devices in the network fabric, you can implement um, virtual networks that don't require the endpoints to do anything. Uh, so that could be a 
virtual LAN switch, for example, that matches a virtual LAN tag and forwards according to uh, uh, whether a packet, uh, uh, an Ethernet frame matches a particular VLAN uh, tag identifier. So there's no processing at the endpoints. Uh, the virtualization is implemented at switches and routers. The other question is, at what layer do we implement virtualization? Networks themselves are um, architected as layered systems. And if you look at the OSI layered um, uh, model, there are seven layers. And we're going to mostly focus on two important layers. Layer two, which handles messaging between devices connected by a single link, for example, Ethernet. And layer three, which handles messages across multiple links, routed over a packet network, for example, uh, the Internet Protocol, or IP. So the focus of our um, um, discussion here will be on virtual networks that apply at the layer 2, uh, which has the benefit of supporting any protocol that's layered on top of it. Not just IP, but other protocols different from IP. Downside is that uh, Ethernet is a broadcast protocol, so you have to worry about how to broadcast messages across uh, the Internet. And also Layer 3 virtual networks, which support anything that sits on top of IP, which covers a, most of the applications that many people are concerned about, but the downside is that it does not allow you to use protocols other than IP. So we're going to start uh, focusing on these different kinds of networks uh, in the next few lectures.